How to monitor Jenkins with the Metrics plugin. If you're in charge of monitoring Jenkins, then you need a way to monitor Jenkins. The Metrics plugin gives you the ability to track a wide variety of metrics such as CPU, memory, disk usage, and much, much more. Here's today's starting point. I have a freshly installed Jenkins controller version 2.332.2. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. So let's go and install the Metrics plugin. We'll go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins. We'll go to Available, and let's search for Metrics. And the Metrics plugin that we want to install is this top one, Metrics 4.1.6.1 at the time of recording. Before we leave it, I'm going to go ahead and open the documentation link for that in a new tab. Let's go ahead and click on the checkbox, Download Now and Install After Restart. You'll notice that Metrics brings along Variant with it. So let's wait for that to download. OK, let's do the restart. And while we're waiting on the restart, let's take a look at the documentation. What we can see here is this plugin exposes the Metrics API to Jenkins plugins. That's all well and good. But the key to this is it's using the Drop Wizard Metrics API. We can see here that we have a standard health check, which contains some values. And we also have standard metrics, which has lots of values, which go on and on and on. And we also have the servlet that, as a user, we can go into Jenkins and take a look at this data. So maybe it's restarted. Let's find out. We'll click on Dashboard. We can log in. And the way we get to this servlet to take a look at this data is if we go ahead and scroll down, we can see that in order to access it, we need to go to our URL and then slash metrics slash current user where the U is uppercase. So let's paste this in at the end of my controller. Let's get rid of the double slash. And now we can see that we have our menu. Let's start with ping because that's the simplest one. And we can see that we get back a Pong. That's a good one that we're going to take a look at again in just a moment. We also have health check, which in my case, since I have a JSON formatter installed on my browser, we can see that disk space is healthy, plugins are healthy, temporary space is healthy, and thread deadlocks are healthy. So this is all good information. Let's go back and let's take a look at metrics. And we can see here all of the different metrics that are exposed to us that we can use. Finally, let's take a look at threats. And we can see here all it's doing is dumping out all of the existing threats. Now looking through the UI is fine, but how can we have a machine monitor our Jenkins controller for us? Let's go over and take another look at the documentation. So as we pull up the documentation, if we scroll down a little bit more, there is another section called machine access. And we can access the data by issuing an API key. So let's go back into our controller. Let's go to Manage Jenkins. Let's get rid of this. Let's go to Configure System. And then let's go down to Metrics. You'll see here that we can add a new access key. We'll click on that. Let's go ahead and generate a new token. So here's our token. I'm going to copy that now because you'll never be able to see it again. Put that over here to the side so I don't lose it. I'm going to give it a description. I'll call this sample. And you'll notice that we have permissions that we can give to this access key. Now, this access key, the way it's currently configured is it would have access to do ping, health check, and metrics, but have no access to thread dump, which if you think about it, when we were looking at the thread dump, that wasn't really machine readable. That was just a text thread dump from the JVM. So it's not really useful from a machine perspective. So leaving that unchecked, probably a good idea. Now we also have origins, so I could filter where this is coming from. The way it's set up here, I'm allowing traffic from anywhere. Let's go ahead and click on Save, and let's go back over to the documentation, and let's take a look at what we're going to call. We're going to be using HTTP GET, and I just need to send it to the base URL, Jenkins URL, metrics key. So let me bring up a command prompt here. That looks good. Let's do a curl, HTTP. So this is my controller. I'm going to do metrics, and I'm going to paste in my key that I just created and put a trailing slash because it's asking for a trailing slash. If we hit Enter, what we're going to see is the access to this operational menu. That's pretty good, right? So I can see that that's there. That's not really the machine information that I want. So let's go ahead and go up here again, and let's type on the end, ping. And we can see that we get an answer of Pong. So that makes this really simple. So now this is an example endpoint 
that we could put into our monitoring system, whatever that may be. We point it at this endpoint. It's using this key. And by sending it ping, if we receive a pong, then we have at least some level of confidence that our Jenkins controller is up and running. Now let's do a similar call, but let's do it against the health check endpoint. So we'll change ping to health check. And what we'll see here is that we're receiving back a JSON string, which is great. But let's say that I only really care about the health of my disk space. So I'm gonna do up arrow and I have JQ installed. So let's just pipe it to JQ. Now we get a pretty print of our JQ. Let me resize this a little bit. And now I want to query this healthy attribute of the disk space block. How do I do that with JQ? Since there is a dash inside of disk dash space, we have to tell JQ something a little different. So I'm gonna do a single quote dot. And since there is a dash there, I have to put double quotes around disk space and then dot healthy. And we'll close that up, hit enter. And we can see here, I could have made curl quieter, but that's okay for now. We can see that it's true. So much like our ping and pong response, by querying disk space, and we're getting back a healthy of true, by aggregating those two items together and maybe a few others, we can gain more confidence that our Jenkins controller is up and truly healthy. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.